Painfully, she limps with her crutches. Irene Nabifuge is one of the many Ugandans who are nursing permanent wounds of medical misdiagnosis. Her story dates back to 1996, when she was continuously getting ill during her secondary school education. She always complained of immense joint pains coupled with high fever. Nabifunge narrates that she was rushed to Rubaga Hospital for medical attention. They thought they did kidney tests, they did blood tests, and they gave us the result as me being a sickler, that I had sickle cells. So I was put on treatment for sickle cell, but there was no change at all. After one year on sickle cell treatment, she did not register any improvement. The doctors at Rubaga, she says, referred her to Mulago Hospital. When we reached Mulago Hospital, the doctor did another test to prove whether he was really a sickler. But when the results came back, the results showed that I was a carrier. And according to the doctors and to the knowledge I know about sickle cells, a carrier must not have pain, but I was having a lot of pain in all the joints. For seven years, Nabifogi remained on sickle cell treatment, but her condition turned from bad to worse. My fingers started deforming. So when I saw the deformities, I went back to the clinic. I told the doctor that I had my fingers were deforming. So he said, oh, we didn't realize this. We have to do more, more tests because it seems you have arthritis. Nabifuge says she was advised to carry out more medical tests at Ebenezer Clinic, which later confirmed that she was suffering from arthritis, results she reported back to Mulago Hospital. So when I reached the rheumatology clinic, the doctor who was there, at first he told me it was too late. But they will do what they can to see that they put that disease under control because I had already started deforming. In 2003, she was started on arthritis medication, the treatment she is currently on to date. I believe if, if it was discovered a bit early, I would not be where I am now. Nabifuge's story perhaps reflects the research by the World Health Organization that indicated that 42% of Ugandan medical workers cannot accurately diagnose major diseases. Although these figures have been contested by the Ugandan Medical Association as not a true reflection of the country's profile, Dr. Margaret Mungerera speaks out on some of the reasons behind this wrong diagnosis. In a country where you have 5,000 doctors, for example, looking after, um, after 36 million people, it is a miracle if you get to get a proper diagnosis is, is really something that doctors have to work very hard at because to spend enough time is, is a challenge for us because we have a lot of patients to deal with. Each patient will require about an hour and if you have a line you have to see 50 in one morning. You can't think you can have 50 hours. Mungerera says that there is a growing number of quack doctors that have infiltrated the medical field. She also underpinned the mushrooming biomedical laboratories. And if the labs are not being well managed, and in this country, until recently, now we've just begun, government, Ministry of Health has just begun, has come out with a policy for laboratories, uh, and now has begun to regulate them. The need for the medical personnel to continuously be trained and educated could not be overemphasized by the medical principal. Such wrong diagnosis has equally had a big economic impact on the healthcare system in Uganda, since many of the patients opt to go to different health centers and hospitals for the same diagnosis. Solomon Serwanja, NTV.